My sister and I pretty much thought we were the only two children in America with a gay dad. I grew up not having collage and always wanting collage. We as a movement really plug into the larger LGBT liberation and rights movements with a completely unique and wonderful voice. I don't think it's overstating the case that collage is the most profound influence on my life. To just know that somebody had walked the path before me, there's something really important and special about celebrating all that is wonderful and all that is challenging and all that is hilarious about the commonalities that come from having had a lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, or queer parent. Collage isn't just an isolated opportunities throughout my life, but collage is and always will be a part of my life. It was like we had these stories that as soon as there was any kind of space for them, just burst out of us. It's not something that we consciously decided, oh, this is a good organizing technique. The stories came first. I grew up in Connecticut and I had a gay dad and parents who divorced as a result of my dad's coming out. And my second semester away at college, my dad was hospitalized with AIDS. First, the AIDS scare. There were public statements on the nightly news. The amount of federal funds being used to fight the mysterious disease. No I was amongst college freshmen who had no concept of AIDS or how to support me through that experience. I remember being expected to cry, and cry almost like on cue, like this is the sad child who's lost their parent to AIDS. It was all sort of about the suffering. And I certainly was grieving, and I certainly was having a horrible time, but that wasn't all of the story. The isolation, I think, that I was coming out of, and that other young people who had gay parents at that time were coming out of, I think it's almost hard to imagine anymore, but walking into that room and finding other people who had the same family background and who had lived with the same secret, who understood, was, you know, it was monumental. Those of us that were in there who were in our late teens or early 20s, we were kind of like, wait, we're, we want to talk to each other and we want to, to have a positive something in here. And so by that end of that weekend is when we'd formed the Just For Us Steering Committee and went to the parents and said, you know, help us, support us, give us, give us a place where we can meet and, and kind of follow this through and, and create it. And so that's, that's what we did. I had been thrown together on a talk show in Canada with Hope Berry. How would you react if your mother or father suddenly told you they were gay? They basically wanted to do a show like Raised by Wolves, you know, Hope and Stefan survive, you know, their gay dads. I found out that the world was straight. I found out that not everyone loved us, you know, and not everyone was really great dancers. And, um, <laughs> you know, that's the stuff I found out. They, you know, sold it to me as just like educational, like the producers of talk shows will always do. And at the last minute, they sprung a uh, conservative pastor on us, even though they promised they wouldn't. If you're raised, for example, by a gay parent who's, for example, a man who's loving a man, that's what you learn. Okay, now if, if, if you don't get that from them, then, then that's uh, not normal. What they weren't counting on was how fierce hope was. It's not, nothing to do with being a loving parent. It's got everything to do with being a loving parent. No, it's parent. not. No, it's what not. else does parenting have to do with except loving and nurturing your children? I was outraged. I had steam coming out of my ears. I was so angry because what was behind all my passion for let's make the world a better place was really a lot of hurt and anger. The people who are not having a positive experience mm -hmm 
didn't want to come on the program exactly. and say so. So that doesn't mean they're not out there. It just means they weren't prepared. They, they felt uncomfortable about coming on national television and saying, I, I, don't want I, my, I don't want my parent to be gay. I'm ashamed of it. I can't tell my friends. The whole thing is driving me crazy. But, but we, that's Shirley, what people call them. My guess is that 99 out of 100 times, the reason for that response from children is not from their gay or lesbian parent. It is because of people like Tony and the people that are promoting the hate and embarrassment for these children. It's not about our parents. It's about this attitude. We really bonded over it. Uh, we came out of it uh, largely unscarred, but very tight. And Hope invited me to this conference that was happening that summer in Indianapolis. And that was really the first time I'd ever been in a group of people I really felt were my peers. When I met Hope, she was really the first person sort of my age with an identity of someone who was raised in a gay family. We really shared this feeling like this is actually a huge part of who we are in the world. There were about 30 kids. We just spent like three days in one room because there was enough kids to like go to breakout sessions. And I remember really feeling like, wow, this is, this is what the beginning of something big looks like and feels like. This is the kind of energy and kind of specialness that you only get um, if you're lucky once or twice in a lifetime. When I was young, I was basically like, I'm not stepping foot near a gay parade. No way. And it wasn't until I found collage and was brought by Stefan to New York City during the 25th anniversary of Stonewall. And that was the very first time that I marched in a parade. And I was doing it under a banner alongside other young people. You know, it was the first time I made a sign, held it, carried it, as the proud daughter of a lesbian mother. That's what Collage gave me and has given me. Pride in myself, my family, and my community. Collage had really got its first footing. We were starting to have enough money to think about hiring actual staff. I would just say to parents, be courageous and be proud of who you are and that your children will follow and they will be courageous and proud of who they are and um, hopefully they will also be proud of who you are. Felicia came and did a workshop and she drew a beautiful picture of an umbrella and really showed a whole gender spectrum and after her workshop looking at the differences between butch and femme and trans sexuals or transgender, FTM, MTF, like getting vocabulary and learning about it meant that we changed our mission to be inclusive of people with bisexual and transgender parents. 96 was my big adult moment. This was, I was going out into the world by myself. I was coming to this new place and I was um, taking a leadership role in collage. I shortly went back to my high school and then went off to college and became, you know, head of our queer student union. And I can't tell you the number of times I recreated Felicia's umbrella. And <laughs> I was the person teaching everybody about trans issues in the middle of Virginia. The larger lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer liberation movement was growing in strides and collage really mirrored that. More people were finding us, they were starting chapters in their own towns. My family had been attending Provincetown Family Week and my parents tricked me into going to a bagel brunch for collage and they just said, oh yeah, there are going to be other families that we know, you'll have a good time, dropped me off and said they had to go find parking, never to return. <laughs> it was the first time that I was in a space with a critical mass of other teenage and adult collagers, and it changed my life. 2000 was this interesting turning point when it came to the media. Um, in the 90s, it was a lot of talk shows, and some were mm -hmm. reputable and some were not as reputable. But in 2000 was when Barbara Walters did a special. It was two years after I first began being more heavily involved in collage that I had the opportunity to start doing more media work. A lot of people would say, oh, what a crazy mixed up family. <laughs> I get that a lot. Reluctantly, she went to a gathering of families where one or both of the parents were gay. What does that mean to you? It was amazing. I have no idea. You meet tons of other teenagers <laughs> with parents and families like me, and it's a whole new world. 
collage has always done a really fabulous job of fielding media opportunities and then working with youth to actually empower them and train them with the skills of how to craft their own messages, how to tell their stories, and how to work with the media so that they can really best represent themselves and what they want to say as opposed to just being fodder for whatever the media wants to get out of them. Finally, there was this validation in the types of media that we're interested in showing our families. This is something that hits home for so many people that it has sparked them to action. Our two mothers were friends and they decided they wanted to be more than friends. I do plan on being open about my family in college because my family is so much of who I am. Right around the same time, people started coming out, real people that were celebrities that everyday Americans knew. And all of that just created a lot more opportunities for people to see what a lesbian or a gay family looked like. First, San Francisco started issuing marriage licenses. And over the last several years, as different states have offered marriage benefits to same-sex couples and then taken them away and then offered them again, our families have had these ways to be validated legally. At the same time, there was this heightened attention on what does it mean if gay people get married and those gay people have kids, and so often our families would experience backlash. Kids need a role model, both a mother and a father. A preschooler and a kindergarten gays from adopting because their children are lesbians. He says his son has been the object of anti-gay taunts by other students. 38 states have anti-gay marriage laws, and only six allow homosexual couples to adopt. But it felt really real to those of us who knew that it was our families under attack, even as our families were making these legal gains. The community started to age, and there were just all of a sudden these unprecedented amount of teenagers who were looking for community and or had grown up in the community. And they wanted to do more than just meet others like them. They wanted to really make change in the world. And after we did a few different of these projects, the youth decided we're going to make a movie. My first question, I think, to people who, would, who are saying that gay people shouldn't adopt would be why. There's no reason why they shouldn't be able to. If there's a loving environment, it's a great family. I just wish also everyone else knew that when you like, walk around and like, saying like, homophobic things, that there might be somebody like, right on your shoulder who's hurting inside because you're saying those things. It was actually the people that elected you and therefore the people that you listen to. So, you know, I the person, my moms and I the people, you know, I would like you to marry my moms. Our family, you know, will not and cannot be invalidated. For one person, being able to tell one friend that they have a bisexual parent is a huge political act and that act is important and it helps our movement. And for someone else, the thing that they can do is get on a stage and speak before 4,000 people and, and demand respect for our families. All of those are needed until and even after we live in a world that treats our families equally. We are never alone anymore in that way that we were alone as kids and the kids before us were alone in the woods. One of the ways that I've always connected with all of you is sharing our stories to the point where I can now tell part of your story. And I think that that's what happens over 20 years is that I could certainly introduce each of you with a level of depth that I can't introduce anyone else in my life. You are all my family and, um, and have been for many, many years. I'm incredibly grateful and I, I can't imagine my life being different and I wouldn't change any of it because it, it makes me who I am. And at the end of the day when I'm an old lady in a rocking chair, I hope that I can look back and say that I was part of a group of people who helped make family a truly inclusive term. Yeah.